Welcome to Strictly Pro Touring. I'm Scott. We're going to be documenting the build of my 1968 Pontiac GTO, aka Project Payback, on StreetMuscleMag.com. Now, if you haven't been following the build, uh, the general overview is it's a 68 GTO um, that we're going to be using uh, to compete in USCA events, LS, LS Fest West, uh, Good Guys, Autocross, um, you name it. And uh, so it's a pro touring car. Uh, it's going to have a modern powertrain, six-speed transmission, sticky 200 treadwear tires, big brakes, you name it. So, uh, this, I mean, although we are in my garage today, um, this is not a garage queen. This is something I, I plan to drive the heck out of. And as I said, I'm going to be competing in events with this. So... The focus of this car is something you can drive on the street, drive every day if you want to pull up to an event, check your air pressure, and go. This is what I hope is like the first of, you know, like a, a bi-weekly updates um, where we document the build. We're starting out with the chassis, which is basically the foundation of the build today. This car, uh, we enlisted the help of Schwartz Performance um, to, to build the chassis. Now, I've, I've met the guys, uh, Dale and Jeff, at uh, Schwartz Performance. I've known them for years. I've met them before at, at some of the events, LS Fest West. I've seen their cars run, um, Street Machine Nationals. They had a uh, Tempest in particular that I saw ran. That's what really caught my eye. Obviously, I'm an A-body guy. That's why I have this car. So I saw the Tempest. I've seen that run. So it's proven. It's obviously a proven product. And um, so I was really excited to, to work with some fellow Pontiac guys. Though, truth be told, I think they're into anything on two and on four and even two wheels. So, um, so let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the chassis. Um, and then we'll get into the suspension and some of the other aspects a little bit later. Um, but starting with the chassis, um, we just did a, I just did a chassis primer story um, before we get into the whole installation story. I did it like a chassis primer um, and had a little bit of a Q&A session with Dale. So I'm going to put the link in the description uh, to that story as well as to the build thread for this car if you want to follow it. And also, if you look above me, you can see my Instagram handle, too. You can get some, some updates there. Plenty of places to follow this build if you're interested in it. Um, but starting with the chassis, um, I'm going to read off some of the specs and kind of walk you through the process of ordering uh, you know, a Schwartz Performance chassis. So first of all, there's a lot of information on Schwartz Performance's website. Uh, definitely check that out when you get a chance. The basics of this thing, of this chassis, uh, for this A-body, 68 to 72 A-body chassis, um, they make chassis for, you know, if you've got a Chevelle, if you've got, you know, a GSX, you've got a 442 Cutlass, Monte Carlo, whatever, um, this basic chassis, the, the, the bones of this chassis are going to be the same. There's a few minor differences that Dale went over with me. Um, but for the most part, everything I'm going to tell you here is applicable to, to your A-body if you've got a 68 to 72. Now this is a, it's a triangulated four-link, similar to uh, what the, the factory runs. Sometimes it's called a candid four-link um, in the rear end. In the front end, uh, it's a little bit more unique. It is a circle track base suspension. So it's got an A-arm at the top. Um, it's got coilovers at all four corners. Um, but in the front, it's got an A-arm at the top and then two control arms on the bottom. Front and rear, it's got these really cool race, race, uh, racy, you know, splined uh, uh, anti-roll bars um, that, that are, you know, come from the, like the circle track world. In the front, they've also got, I'm, I know I'm jumping around a bit. In the front, they, they've also got these proprietary, um, proprietary spindles uh, that, they, that they fabricate out of steel. So very cool stuff, very trick stuff. Um, kind of a mix between, it's very circle track inspired. In the front, rack and pinion. The rear, it's got kind of a factory-based 
suspension, except it, they're running uh, like hind joints at all, you know, at all the connection points. Now, some of the people, some people might be worried about driving hind joints on the street. Dale assured me that these these FK bearings that they're running in there, they're Teflon. They've got Teflon in them. They really hold up um, a lot better than what you're imagining in terms of in, in terms of having rod ends in your suspension. So he assured me this was not going to be an issue in terms of driving on the street. Um, and the fact that they use these bearings really allows you to have a, an economical four link. Yet I say economical, but you know. When you compare it to the cost of, say, an IRS or something like that, it is it is rather economical. But basically, what he said is it gives you the best of both worlds, so you can get some of the articulation of uh, you know of an IRS, but without the binding that you'll get typically in a four length that has like you know polyurethane bushing. So it's kind of a best of both worlds scenario, is how Dale described it. Now. Schwartz does offer an IRS rear end. It's uh, in partnership with Heights. So that, I believe it's a C4, I'm not sure if it's proprietary or C4 based, but that is a, a, an IRS rear end that you can um, also purchase if, if you've got deeper pockets than I do, uh, which wouldn't be hard. So uh, the only limitation, as I understand with the IRS, is that it's about, they're saying about 700 horsepower before you have some issues, I, I'm assuming, with the axles and everything else. Now this, they say about 1,000 horsepower. Um, there are 31, 31 spline axles from Mosier in here that go along with a bare, uh, full floater rear end. Now you may be wondering, hey, why do you need a full floater? Not everyone does. Uh, but for pro touring, for autocross road racing, highly recommended. Uh, we're going to have a full story on what full floaters, are, floating, full floating rear ends are, and why you need them in a pro touring car. We'll have that coming up later. Um, but just know that this has the, the bare uh, full floater option uh, with the Mosier axles and a Mosier center section. So that's kind of like an overview on you know this chassis and everything. We'll dive just a little bit deeper right now. And so, so bear with me. Uh, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into into the chassis itself, and then we'll go into kind of the suspension, the rear end, and stuff like that. So, here we go. So, first things first, the chassis. This is a fully boxed steel frame. Um, now, aside from the wagons and the convertibles, these cars. All the A bodies actually have a C channel. They're not a fully boxed frame, but this Schwartz chassis is fully boxed. They're utilizing, uh, you know, this structural steel. It's one eighth and three sixteenths of an inch thick, which is mandrel bent. The, met the metal was put into a fixture for the bottle on the jig table and welded. Although some of the pieces, like the lower control arms, are actually TIG welded. In the gallery on Schwartz's website, you can see that they give a really good idea of how a car will look sitting on the chassis. Um, some examples of different complete chassis with various powder coating options, as well as some of the some of the other options. We went with a black powder coat frame, um, nothing crazy there. And then the rear end housing, we went with silver. Um, though you can opt not to powder coat the frame if you like. Uh, each chassis is custom made to fit the various versions of the 68 to 72 A bodies. The BOP uh, has a different uh, rear bumper brackets and, and depending on the year there is a different piece for the core support. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the coilovers. Um, in all four corners we've got Rytec coilovers. These are single adjustable. Schwartz actually offers a uh, triple adjustable uh, for the really high-end stuff. But Dale basically told me, you are probably going to run out of driver ability before you run out of you know, capability with these shocks. So I said, okay, no problem, fair enough. I'm a little rusty, frankly, um, so it's going to take me a little while to get used to being back behind the wheel and work out some of the cobwebs. But these things have 24 uh, clicks of adjustment. We've got, I believe it's a 475 pound spring in the front and then a 220, 225 springs in the rear. 
Um, again, these are made by Rytec. The actual body of the shock is made by Fox Racing. I um, mean, Fox Racing, if you don't know, they build some of, the, some of those badass shocks in off-road racing. Um, and, you know, they, they're probably doing a lot of these kind of things behind the scenes where, you know, it's got somebody else's name on the front, but in tiny print you can see Fox Racing. So really, really high-end, nice shocks, although it's not exactly going to break the bank either. But if you want triple adjustables, they got them. Um, the fronts, uh, important to note, the fronts are actually a long travel, so that's going to give you some really great ride quality, um, let, it, let, let the shock cycle through um, a lot of movement so that it can really control the dampen. Um, one of my, the best parts about this chassis is that it really takes a lot of the flex um, that you would see with a stock chassis out. So, it's transmitting all of that movement is happening in the suspension and the shocks where it should instead of the, the chassis, you know, vibrating. Um, so that makes, helps make these, this, uh, this car, it's going to help make this car very predictable to drive. And that was one of the other things that Dale commented with the shocks. These are a single tube, uh, monotube shock as opposed to, a, you know, a multi, a dual tube shock. And those are really known for being predictable and easy to drive, which is, again, very big plus. Anything that's going to make this car easier for me to drive, I'm a big fan of. So strike that, guys. It's 475-pound front springs and 275 in the rear. The front suspension, as I mentioned, is Circle Track inspired. It's got proprietary spindles, and an upper A-arm, two ball joints, two lower control arms, and a long travel coilover that mounts to the frame rail. It was really important this car had modern handling and performance so that it can be competitive at, at, at events I plan to go to. Plus it needs to be enjoyable to drive on the street, right? So the, now onto the rear end. As I mentioned, this is a full floater uh, that Bear makes. The actual housing itself is from Mosier, and the center section I have is from Mosier. But the, the floater is, is, is all made for, by Bear. Um, now the importance of that is that if, you know, the axles, as you move back and forth, the axles want to move back and forth. So what happens is the axles are attached to the rotor. So if you don't, without a full floater, what happens is that rotor moves back and forth and you've got a fixed caliper like that. And what happens is the rotor is no longer centered. So the idea with a floater is the rotor is always going to be centered in in the caliper, no matter where the you know, no matter what movement the car has side to side. So otherwise, what happens is that that rotor is just pressing on the piston, and then you've got one on the sides of the piston that's touching nothing, and you've got no rear brakes, which is terrifying. So that's the big deal with the full floater. Again, we're going to have a full story on that uh, coming up soon on Street Muscle. Um, some of the other features of this Mosier rear end, they're 31 spline axles. Um, Schwartz says those are good for 1,000 horsepower. If you've got deeper pockets than me, you can get that Heights IRS uh, upgrade, which is good for about 700 horsepower, unfortunately. We plan on making more than 700. Actually, the engine, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen some of the other content, the build thread, which I highly recommend you do, we are already making more than 720 horsepower at the crate engine that I have now. And with a few tweaks, it may be more like 750, we'll see. So, yeah, the solid axle was a must on this car. Um, plus, it keeps the cost down, I mean, frankly. Um, and that's, that's always good. If you can go just as fast or almost as fast uh, for a considerable less, less money, um, that's always nice, especially in all this craziness that we have going on now. I'm sure everybody wants to keep keep a little bit of money in their pocket. So the center section itself is from Mosier, as I mentioned. It's a nodular iron center. I didn't go anything too fancy like an aluminum uh, center section. Again, trying to keep the cost down a little bit. Um, I have a 370 gear in there uh, with the combo that you'll the powertrain combo you'll you'll see later. With a taller tire, we're probably going to run a pretty tall rear tire. Um, I felt that would probably be a good. Uh, a good combo. Uh, I have a pretty tor torquey motor setup. If you've got a big block, um, you know, you might be in a similar scenario. 
Uh, the, for the differential, very crucial in a pro touring build that you pick a really good differential. I personally prefer um, a helical uh, gear style uh, li limited slip differential. Now a posi diff, also pretty good. You probably want to stay away from a cone diff. Absolutely stay away from a locker, spool, wrong area, right? Spool's great for drag racing, not so much in pro touring. Um, it's even good in a lot of off-road racing. Spool's good, uh, dirt track, things like that. But for pro touring, you want a posi, limited slip. My personal preference, again, is, is the helical gear. And we went with the Detroit True Track uh, from Eaton. So that's what's in this car. Um, highly recommended to run that in some of my other cars. Um, though I've also run some clutch, clutch style posies that have worked pretty well too. So, okay, on to the brakes. This car is running uh, a was running bare brakes. Now there, if you can see, you can probably can't see here, but these are actually branded Schwartz. Schwartz worked with bare on the combo for this car. Um, but you do have several variations, several options if you are purchasing a Schwartz chassis. They have Willwood front and rear that are about 13 inch and a couple of different rotor variations, slotted or drilled or whatever. Um, the bare options are the larger ones. They're 14 inch front and rear, and there are a couple of different brake packages even for bare that you can uh, bare and Schwartz that you can get. Um, so we went with the bare route. Um, pretty happy about that, frankly. Always really like bare products. Nothing against Willwood also makes a good product. Um, but for this car, the larger brakes are going to be essential. This is a pretty heavy car. I mean, it's not, it's not a first-gen F body or a Corvette. It needs the, all the braking power it can get. It's probably going to uh, heat up those, those rotors pretty good, especially out here in the desert in California. So really, uh, really good braking we're going to have on this car thanks to those bare brakes. Uh, they're proprietary. They've got Schwartz branding on them. Uh, made especially for this chassis. So another fun aspect of choosing your Schwartz chassis um, is choosing the powder coat options on, on, your brake, on your brake calipers. So I went with a copper. Now, as I mentioned, the frame is powder coated black, the rear end is powder coated silver, and now the brake calipers are, are powder coated copper. We intend on going with that, that silver blue, that light silver blue that you may have seen the rendering of. So truth be told, I did like the electric blue, but the silver blue is really what I was, was, my, was my favorite, I think. And it was, it was my favorite at the outset before we had even seen the renderings. And it was kind of hard to break that, break out of that, frankly. Um, and everyone else really seemed to like it too. So that's the route we're going. So imagine this car, silver blue, Maybe I'll throw the rendering up there for you to see it. Copper brake, brake calipers. Um, and then if you look underneath the car, you'll see a silver rear end and then with the um, black powder coated frame. Closing thoughts. So after you've ordered your Schwartz Performance chassis, it takes about a couple of months for them to build one. Hopefully you've checked the option for the, for the assembly. It's only about $850. But it's worth it because when you do, what happens is when you check that box, this thing arrives on a trailer with wooden wheels, which we'll, we'll flat, flash a picture up there for you, um, rolls off the trailer, fully assembled. You literally just, you know, drop your old chassis off your body and this thing will just bolt right up. That's it. It actually doesn't require any cutting to the, bo uh, to the underside of the body. What you do have to do is make your own body mounts. Um, and the reason is that these are old chassis, old body, I mean, sorry, these are old bodies. You're putting this brand new stiff chassis on there. And whereas the rubber might make up for the variant, the production variances in this thing, that stiff chassis, you know, and the flimsy chassis, would, the rubber and the flimsy chassis, not so much with a brand new, you know, stiff Schwartz chassis. So you need to make your own mounts to kind of compensate for the, you know, production variations in the chassis. So, so anyways, yeah, you, you roll the thing right off um, and it's ready to, to be bolted in. 
Um, so it's a great option. You never have to worry about do your control arms fit, saves, on, saves you on labor costs. It's, it's definitely worth it. And you've got peace of mind to know this is exactly how this is supposed to go together. No problems. One quick note on those wood wheels. Obviously, you probably don't want to support the entire weight of the car on those things. We've got, we borrowed a set of uh, rollers here off of Project Max Street. Um, these are not the final wheel and tire combo that are going to go on here, but thankfully, uh, James let me borrow these for the time being. Now, the reason we had to do this is I asked Schwartz, hey, can you give me some wheel specs so I can order my wheels? Well, unfortunately, they said, that the variations in the body don't really allow that. Some cars, you know, if that one backspacing works and another it doesn't. So they suggested, like any good builder would, measure it for your own wheels, custom order it, custom measure it, make sure you get exactly what you want. Um, so that's what we're going to do. It does make it a little bit of a, it does make a little bit of a pain because now you've got your chassis in, You've got a car, you've got a chassis, you've got to store these things. Uh, maybe you test fit, measure, take them back apart. I don't know. We were, thankfully, we were able, we had these wheels that we knocked the wheel weights off. They're 17 inches and they managed to just squeeze um, over that big brake package. But we're going to have 18 or 19 inch wheels on this thing eventually. Um, so that's, we just had to cut uh, some new wheel wells in the back. So stay tuned for that. We've got plenty more content ahead on Project Payback. On the Power Auto Media channel, we're going to have an overview on the build, and we'll go through some of the other choices, like the engine, the transmission, um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the project in general. Um, that's with Vinny Costa, the editor of Street Muscle Magazine. In addition, we'll have more uh, build updates right here. Um, got some cool stuff coming up. Um, got the steering shaft. We'll talk about... Um, hey, why is the car main project payback history of the car? Uh, we'll talk about pro touring in general. So definitely stick with us. Hit that subscribe button down below and also check out some of the uh, some of the links in the build thread down below, please. And stay tuned for more.